In this video traders, we are gonna talk about trading big gaps. Stick around. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so what's a gap? Let's just run over very quickly why it's important, why I think it's uh, crucial to have some kind of strategy for trading gaps. Now, a gap happens when something is what I call repriced. So in other words, especially if you're talking about a big gap, something has happened that the collective voting machine, which is the market, has decided that that asset, that instrument, that market is worth significantly more or significantly less. Now, if you're trading something, something like Euro USD or one of the indices, those gaps are obviously gonna happen at the weekend only because you've got 24-5 trading around many of those larger instruments. So not as frequent as say a stock where may well gap on earnings, we've got a whole universe of stocks. But if you think about what's actually happening here, if you're trading USD, USD for example, if it gaps up on the Sunday evening or whatever time zone you're in when it starts trading after the weekend, you know, something has happened that significantly affected people's perception of the strength of the euro or the strength of the dollar or whatever we're looking at. And that supply demand has shifted significantly and we've had a gap. Now, it's super rare to get big gaps in large assets like that because of course, you know, the fundamental drivers don't shift that frequently. Unlike a stock, for example, where, you know, a growth stock or a kind of, um, exciting stock it's something that hey all of a sudden there's some earnings come out or some news come out or they've changed the pricing or reg regulation or legislation it just changes them the value of the stock you know, significantly so it's very often why we get you know big stock gaps and not so much gaps on some of the bigger stuff however you know it's important to have some kind of setups and strategies up your sleeve because even if you're trading some of the bigger stuff the thicker stuff like the currency pairs the indices etc you know you get big opportunity because if like me you like to look at the market from a supply demand a perspective the imbalance how it's going to shift where it neutralizes where it goes back another direction and it's taking a step back from the crowd and thinking right uh, you know, why is this moving? What's the next likely move? What am I need to look for from the chart perspective to kind of uh, cement that idea and that theme? Then I think it, it pays to have that. So if we have small gaps, talk about small gaps, for example, uh, this is about trading bigger gaps, this video specifically, but small gaps, very quickly, guys, if they are a gap in the direction of the trend and it's a small gap, it's not a big catalyst like some sort of interest rate hike out of nowhere, some sort of catastrophe or anything crazy, then very often trading for a gap fill is the way to go, especially in the direction of trend. So if the daily trend is up, gap lower, then generally speaking, that gap is gonna fill. Just because the overall arching theme of what's causing the dup trend, the economic environment, whatever it may be, will tend to eventually overcome that lower gap. Now, will it happen straight away in the same day? Often it does, but sometimes it doesn't. But let's talk about these bigger gaps. So I've got Spotify in front of you here. Um, and Spotify, you know, doesn't matter what the stock is, but this is kind of streaming stock. You guys are probably with Spotify. Gap lower based on earnings. Earnings wasn't quite as good as they expected. Whatever the point is, in the day, it's what the street expects as to what they deliver. They didn't really go down too well. Fine, gap down 10%. So, a couple of ways of trading this. The first way of trading this, if you think about the supply demand imbalance, the gap lower has basically a voting machine that has said, we think the stock is worth 10% less than what it was before we got this information. Now, very often you're gonna get um, a situation where the open is kind of a bit of a, you know, a bit of a crazy time. Now, if you're a scalper, a day trader, and you're just trading on pure technical momentum, there's probably opportunity there for you. You watch that, you spot that, you look at price action, you look at your tape, you take your trade. If you're more position or day trade looking for one or two themes in the day, you kind of perhaps want to wait and see what happens at the open because it's a good indicator of potentially where the net rest of the day is going to go. So if it's driving lower straight off the open, you can often assume that actually larger players, higher time frame players, institutions are dumping some stock. Now, are they completely dumping it and getting rid of it? Maybe not, but there's some enough supply there to overcome that demand, especially when you're high volume after earnings day, a lot of shares traded. That's a good indicator of, of kind of perhaps the future direction. Now, it's not always the case because sometimes you might get a snap straight back up, but it's a good line in the sand. You go, right, there's my kind of daily range. There's my range, or not daily range, there's my range so far in the day. 
Let's zoom in a little bit on this. Um, I can kind of frame that a little bit. Let me delete off that stuff. I can frame that a little bit and go, right, 270 high, uh, low of 260. So 260 to 270, uh, well, 262, wasn't it? 262, 270, that's kind of your range. And you can go, right, well, while price stays in the lower third of this, I don't want to be thinking long. Now, of course, if your strategy is you don't think the gap is too big, this is where the subtle distinction comes, guys. If there's a 10% gap, then you might, that's too big. If there's a 2% gap and it's not that important, then buying double bottoms after a flush lower at the open is exactly the kind of thing you want to be doing or I like to be doing because the gap's not that significant, the supply demand imbalance isn't that, isn't that, isn't that significant, etc., etc. Whereas when you get a big move, then you gotta be careful about kind of loading the boat straight into it. Now, if the market rallies straight off the open from a large gap, then buying that momentum ignition, buying that flag, waiting for a pullback to find some support. One of my other favorite things, get you support after a big drive. There's the gap lower here to here. Then buying that with a stop at this level, you don't like that because the risk reward ratio is high. You've got an obvious target of your gap fill. If that works for you, great, bingo, it's gonna be lovely. Um, rare, you know, I have to say when you get the big gaps, rare, because you're often gonna get this flush. So how do you trade this? Now, I'm not one for trying to pick a, a low when we've got a significant reprice scenario. Like I said, if it's small, fine, you might be into it, you might be looking to get long because of the thesis that the broader term trend will always uh, kind of trump the short term movement. However, something to watch out for is, you know, if we kind of get a, one of the setups that I like is either taking a break above the high, you know, so you're kind of bracketing this and you're saying, right, well, if we do whatever we need to do, if later in the day we break that high and pull back or consolidate above it, it almost sets up a similar trade to the one kind of just put up earlier where you've kind of found some support after moving higher. Now, admittedly, in this case, you've kind of done this, and this is what you've done here, but, well, actually, it'll be, it'll be here, wouldn't it? But you're kind of saying, okay, we've seen some weakness, has that been overcome? Buying into that strength, great. Put my stop under this low and look for a gap fill. I like that, and that's something I like to look for. Now, sometimes I like to try and get on a little bit earlier and maybe scale some off into the highs on a very short-term basis, and then look to hold for a bigger move. And so this is where the VWAP comes into play. VWAP on TradingView, um, you know, embedded in there very easily. It's kind of one of the built-in indicators. But when we start holding above the VWAP with some strength, I like that. Like this is a, we're a five minute chart here on Spotify. And this is the trade I took and it's been an actual stop out. But hey, real world guys, this is what happens. Uh, very often, though, it, it works very effectively as why well. I continue to take this type of trade and earnings season, I'll be all over these type of things. You know, when we kind of take out a prior high, like you, you, you could argue, and I guess you'd agree with me here, that there's some resistance there. Then we come up and we start flagging and holding above the VWAP. That looks pretty good, and it's quite early on in the day as well. There's a chance here that we're going to take out that high, consolidate. You've got a choice. I like to get an early to break. So it gives me a choice. I can take some off. I can leave some on. I've got a bit more flexibility. You know, so buying this type of, and then another support above the VWAP, I like this. For me, it's a trigger and actually took this trade. Rallies up higher. Now, what you're really wanting is for it to break through the highs. Of course, it'd be very nice if it's ripped up and filled the gap. Thank you very much. Take your money, walk off. Uh, mm, often not the case, guys. Consolidation, testing around, and then the afternoon, rolling back up some key a key point here guys is the afternoon very often tells the true story to the gap if the afternoon starts to push into gear and kick into gear because all the kind of oscillations are done and it's you know the longer term thinking coming in a longer term opportunity whether to dump it or to pick it up happening uh, and so getting a head start on that is sometimes quite nice as a kind of trade looking for a, a gap fill or two or three day move whatever you may be now in this case you know, it didn't work out. It held above here all very, very well, and eventually it rolled over, uh, you know, and it's kind of, take it out, take your stop, this isn't working. There's no point. It's, if you're going to trade this, you're expecting people to perceive a 10% discount as a significant discount, and to step in, and for demand to outstrip supply, and for this thing to pop straight back up. It doesn't happen. Afternoon tail comes in around kind of six o'clock UK time, and we just start drifting lower. There's no urgency to it, but it's drifting lower. It's obviously, there's a lot of uh, supply overhang here. Uh, so that's one way of doing it, is to see the gap, wait for the strength, um, and, and kind of find some support that's a little bit higher, either above that high, or in this case, above the VWAPs. 
two levels of you know a, a resistance level broken a support level found little miniature type flag yes it's a bit early and yes you're going to get stopped out but even if you get stopped out half of these trades the risk reward ratio on these is so significant that you can kind of do it and you can rinse and repeat and it can be a strategy that you have in your arsenal so um that's the one thing i like guys if you see that uh super interested to, to super interesting in my opinion to kind of get on these or at least look at them uh, obviously managing your risk and understanding where you're going to come out but i think the because you have that decent risk reward ratio and if we look and we scroll up what are we talking you know it's, i've got on my notes it's in the notepad shut but uh, decent risk reward ratio very very low risk in terms of what you could uh, the money you can make for hit your profit target uh, and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out so something to look out for guys lower move gap lower strength find support vwap's quite a good line in the sand a rule that i like to use you use whatever you like you can use a moving average for intents and purposes i guess but i like vwap because i know it's an algorithmic institutional benchmark find support and then you're a little bit early on if you don't like taking it too early breaking of the of the kind of early high and holding Again, there's another quite another way of doing it. Final way very quickly is if you don't like taking that and you're waiting for more and more and more. And don't forget, guys, the longer you wait for confirmation, the more juice you're leaving on the table. You know, if you're taking this high break, wait if you can for that VWAP to catch up to price. And this is going to be a later in the day type trade. If it holds there, then you know you can kind of pull your trigger there, put your stop maybe under that previous high area, and have your stop in this kind of zone. That's not too bad as well because you're kind of again waiting for that VWAP as a as a confirmation that algo, algos and institutional benchmark traders are using that as a as a support level uh, and buy off there and then look for a further move up. Now, are you likely to get acceleration to close? It does happen. It's very nice when that happens. You're on it, get a nice acceleration into the close, and then you can decide whether to hold for an overnight move or close it out, have a day trade. Entirely up to you, but it's a nice position. Uh, to be in. Anyway, guys, hope that's in, hope that's of some use to you. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye bye.